And now we're going to look at several examples of how we roll. We're going to start with a simple case of a cylinder rotating on a surface, rolling on a surface. Simplest motion you could imagine. But when you look at the details, it's not as simple as it seems. So that's why we say it's a very complicated motion. So let's think about what the different parts of the cylinder are actually doing when the cylinder rolls. So I put that yellow piece of tape on the cylinder, and we can imagine where it is at different times. So three snapshots. At one point, the tape is down here. At a time earlier, the tape was up here, and at a time later, the tape is over there. So the motion it actually goes through, the path, the tape path, you can see, here we'll show you a, a zoom in of it, and we'll track it a little bit. So that's called a cycloid. C-Y-C-L-O-I-D. I'm sure in whatever physics book you're using, there's a picture where they did a long exposure picture of a light sticking on something rolling. It's a very popular thing to do. Um, but I'll draw it here so you just saw it. Yeah, it kind of looks like this. And if you think about it, every piece of the uh, edge of the cylinder is going through that motion. And then even pieces that aren't on the edge, here like in the middle, they're also going through a cycloid-like motion. The very center is the one part that isn't. Its cycloid motion is so small, it's just kind of moving to the side. So every, at every radius, every piece of the cylinder is doing something kind of different. That's a pretty complicated motion. Um, here's another complication. So one, it's actually cycloidal motion. Two, what we want to say is the cylinder rotates about its contact point with uh, the surface. Right, the surface, not its center. So you look at this, and you watch it roll by, and you say, oh, look at that. It's a cylinder rotating about its center. Well, it isn't. If you think about it carefully, let's look at this point. It's really rotating about here, this piece of tape right at the surface. And the whole thing is rotating like that. So the top is rotating about that point. This is rotating about that point. So again, not as simple um, as it sounds. In fact, I sense a parallel axis theorem coming, right? You want to think about it rotating here, but it's really rotating here. Mm, foreshadowing. Um, so this would be sort of hopelessly difficult uh, to resolve if the sort of rotating motion and the translating motion were independent of each other, then we'd really be in trouble. But the good news is the rotation and the translation are related. Rotation, it's clearly rotating, just about this axis instead of this axis. And translation, right, it's clearly translating, it moved from there to there, are related. And the relation you can get without a huge uh, amount of derivation here, let's look at it and realize that as it rotates, say, from, as it gets from here to here, what it's doing is since it's not slipping on the surface, since every point on the edge touches a point on the surface, this arc length S that it goes through is the same as this length right here. We'll call that S as well. It lays this arc length down on the ground, and that's how it goes from here to here. Here to here, the same as there to there. Right? So it travels a distance s equal to the arc length s that it rotates through. So let's see where that difference is going to show up. So it travels, its center of mass, its motion travels a distance s. So if we want to look at the speed then, we say how fast does that change in time? ds dt. That's the velocity of the center of mass. How much is it changing? in time there. And then we say, well, what is arc length s? It's r d theta. That's, that's um, d r theta dt. Not r d theta, it's r times theta. But the radius is a constant. It's the angle that's changing. Right? As it rotates, it's changing its angular position. It's, it's r is constant. So of course, that's equal to pull out the r and then omega. Right? 
d theta dt is omega. So the translational motion of the disk is equal to big R, its radius, times the um, angular frequency, or the angular velocity. So this is exactly what we said before when we talked about at the very beginning of this, uh, uh, of section six, we talked about the relationship between rotational motion and circular motion. And we thought about the edge of something moving in a circle. Same thing we're thinking about here. But instead of thinking about the velocity or the speed of an object on the edge, we're realizing that that speed is the same as the speed uh, that something rolling goes across the surface. Since it doesn't slip, those speeds are the same. And then I'll just throw in that this is true. And if it's accelerating, then you get the same kind of a relationship. You get that the acceleration of the center mass is r times the angular acceleration. All right, so now that you have this idea of how rolling works, now we're equipped to uh, work on some problems. <laughs>